Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a wood transfer. So we're going to take this picture and we're going to transfer it onto this wood. So what we've done is you're going to take whatever picture you're going to use and you want to print it out on the thinnest paper possible. So this is just printer paper. If you don't have this as inkjet uh, from an inkjet printer, you can do it in black and white, colored, whatever you want to do. If you don't have a printer, um, you can go to Staples, Kinko's, anything like that. Just ask them to print it on the thinnest paper possible. I used to make these on canvas. You could do this on canvas wood. It's been several years ago. But uh, so this is what we're going to need. I printed out two of these just in case something happened. I have a backup. Um, so what we're going to do is, and then I've got my piece of wood. Now, if you don't have scrap wood laying around the house, and my husband just kind of sanded this down for me, if you don't have scrap wood laying around, you could always go to Lowe's, Home Depot, and just have them catch a little piece. So this project here is only a couple dollars, and it'd be a great wedding gift. So this is from my cousin's wedding that I've recently talked about. Aren't they just super cute? And this image is reversed, by the way. So the, what you're going to need is your wood, your picture. You're going to need some Mod Podge, or you can use gel medium, but you're also going to need the Mod Podge to go over it. Now, I have dishwasher safe. It's going to work just the same, and that's what I'm going to use. But if you want a matte finish or any certain type of finish, then you'd want to get those. There's one Mod Podge that makes it like an antique finish, or... Like I said, you can do the gel medium first and then the Mod Podge on top. But we're gonna, I'm going to show you, if you only have Mod Podge, what you can do. All right, and then you're going to need a foam brush. Um, and if you have a wider one, whatever size you want to do to cover more area at one time, but this is what I have. And then um, whenever we get this down, we're going to need to smooth out any type of uh, bubbles. So what I'm going to use is some sort of roller. I have this one, and I also have... Um, I have this one by Ranger, and I also have this one right here by Cricut, so this will cover a lot more surface. So, it's just some sort of roller brush if you have one. If not, you can use um, an old credit card, gift card. These are like those um, in illustrated faith cards that you use for Bible journaling. So, anything like this to kind of help smooth it out. All right. So, the very first thing that we're going to do, we've already got our wood ready to go. We've, I've, we've sanded ours down um, just to make it a lot smoother. You don't have to do that. Um, unless your wood is just super rough. But like I said, my husband just sanded this down. I'm not concerned about this knot right here. I've kind of laid down my image and kind of figured out. Um, I think it's going to be back here on the back side of her dress. So I think it's going to be fine where it's at. Now, um, you can take and you would want to trim off any excess like this white right here. Whenever you have your picture, if you need to trim it down, you want to do that before. So you're going to figure out the size of your wood and stuff like that. Um, you could also do this on tile. It doesn't have to be wood. You can do it on tile, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this trimmed up and we'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got this all trimmed up. All I did was took off the remaining little pieces of white just to, um, that way whenever we transfer this, I don't have that left on the wood. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set my wood out of the way for a second. So we're going to take our picture here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake up my Mod Podge really good. All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make me a little pile. You can even just take off this whole top right here and just dip your brush into that if that's what you wanna do. Or you can make a little pile and just kinda dip in that. That's what I'm gonna do. And you wanna coat this with a nice thick layer. So I'm gonna get quite a bit on my, on my brush here. And I'm just gonna start and just really kinda getting this on here. All right, so once you get that, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your picture here. I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to go ahead and wipe this area off. All right, I got my wood. I'm going to take my picture here and very carefully get it on here. Just trying to make sure I can get it really even. Just like that. So what we're going to do is just get all this down and I really feel like I didn't get enough but we'll find that out here in just a little bit so what I'm going to do with any remaining air bubbles I'm just going to kind of go like this and really smooth this out this really helps I have tried so many different ways and these rollers are amazing and right now if you're this is March 
well, I want to say March. This is April 4th, I believe. Um, these right here were on clearance at Hobby Lobby for about two bucks, but they're pretty affordable anyways. Um, this Cricut one, I'll have it linked down below as well. I think it's just, I think it's around five dollars. It wasn't too bad. I'll just link it down below just in case. I like it because it's pretty big, but I believe you can get these in the screen printing um, at like Hobby Lobby and stuff too, so, but definitely worth the investment. So once I get that, and that looks like it's bubble free, so I'm going to kind of do this so that way I can see. I think everything looks pretty good. Just making sure that's pushed down really good. Just pushing that image into the wood and that glue. All right, so that looks good to me. Then once you have it just like this, you're gonna set it aside overnight. So like right now, it is about two o'clock in the afternoon. I'd come back to it. I can either come back to it this evening, you know, late this evening, or, um, cause you really want it to set at least eight to 12 hours. But what I do is normally I would just set this and come back to it the next morning. So just set this overnight, let it sit, and you can take any remaining glue off like this that you have so it's not just sitting on the wood. And um, I'll come back and then we'll we'll finish the next step. Okay, so I've let this sit overnight. So it is, it did this about two o'clock yesterday. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. So I've let it sit overnight. So what I'm gonna do now is, you can see it's completely dry and I'm gonna take a wet wash rag and I'm just going to wet this. So I wring this out quite a bit, but left just a little bit of water in here enough to get this soaking wet. So that's what I'm gonna do now is just really get this wet. Okay, so once you feel that you've got it wet enough, then you're gonna take your rag. You wanna use uh, like an old rag for this. It is gonna get a little bit sticky and stuff. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start at some point and start rubbing. You don't wanna rub too hard, just enough to peel off the paper. And what I like to do when you, I start to get paper like this, I'll kind of get another spot. And just kind of move over and then I'm just gonna keep rubbing until I get all of this paper off. Okay, so now we have it all off of here. Now you're gonna see as it starts to dry a little bit, it'll look a little bit white here and there, but once you get your Mod Podge on here, you're not gonna see that anymore. So what you can do is, like I said, I printed this off twice. So what I can always do is come back in. So I can see like this stuff right here is my clouds. So I can tell, like I said, this is backwards, so it's actually this way. So this is clouds up here, obviously, and that has nothing to do with the white, and I can kind of look around. I've got one little spot here that kind of peeled. Um, and then right in here in this knot, I've got a few pieces that, you know, it's not going to come out, but I think that's fine. 
one little spot here that seems like it's kind of stayed and then this spot right here that kind of peeled but this is like the best that i think i've ever had it come out and it was the smoothest and i honestly think it has to do with using the rollers because normally sometimes it'll bubble and that's where your picture will tear and you'll have like little holes and stuff um so i do highly recommend using one of these like i said they're super affordable you can find them where the screen printing stuff is um i'll have like this Cricut one linked down below because it's super affordable and i'll look and try to link this ranger one from amazon or something just so they're down below um but I do believe that has something to do with it. And then instead of using the matte medium, which I think is super thick, um, I used the Maj Paj, and I think that worked out good. This is the dishwasher safe. Um, I don't know if you need to necessarily use this one because I've used plain Maj Paj before, but I will say this is the best I've ever had it come out, and it was a dishwasher safe. This was from Hobby Lobby, $7.99, and I used a 40% off coupon. Just look for the little dishwasher on top right here. If they don't have it where normally like all the glue and adhesives are at Hobby Lobby, look on the end caps because sometimes I've found it on the end cap. I think Walmart does carry it too. You just have to check your, your local Walmart. So, so the next step that you're going to do, once you have officially and you feel that all the paper is off, what you're going to do is you want to kind of wipe it again with a clean uh, wash rag and just make sure any of that paper is off. So what I'm going to do is uh, get another clean rag. But in the meantime, I'm going to kind of talk about this really quick. So You'll see like, um, cause I have this video on fast forward motion. I'll kind of stop it and I was cleaning my surface cause you will have all these little pieces of paper everywhere. So every once in a while I'll stop, get those cleaned up, rinse the rag out again because you'll have so much paper build up. But you'll see that I constantly was turning my wash rag to get away from paper so it was a fresh piece. And you just want to nice and, and, and carefully pull that paper off and keep it moist because as you're working in one area, this may start to dry. So you want to, you'll see where I kind of rang the rag and got a little bit more moisture on it. Um, but as, like I said, you can start to see this is drying a little bit. You'll see where it kind of looking white, like a white film. But once you put that Mod Podge on there, that's not going to happen. But like these parts right here, you can see all the wood grains in the background. And then right here, it kind of did rough up a little bit in this corner. But you want it to kind of have that little bit of a vintage, grungy look. Now, when I'm done with this, I'm going to Mod Podge it first. I'll come back with a stain, probably. It'll either be one of my uh, my washes that I've been using in my other video, or I'll use a stain. And we'll do that after the Mod Podge. So here is our clean rag. So I'm just going to go over this one more time to make sure I have all these tiny little pieces of paper off. Because you don't want those to end up sticking down. So I'm just wiping over that. One last time, I'm gonna flip this rag around and just make sure there's no tiny little pieces of paper. All right, so once I've done that, I'm gonna set that out of the way and then I'm gonna go ahead and work on my glue here. Mix my, my glue just like I've done before and I'm just gonna get some over here on my mat. You could just use a paper plate, you know, anything that you have. And then I'm gonna take a foam brush. And like I said, you can use the water brushes it's gonna cover. You just want to keep your streaks nice and smooth and what you want to do first is you want to make sure this is dry before you go over it with the glue okay so now that it's all dry i just took my heat gun and held it at a distance and got this all dry or you can set it aside and just let it dry naturally but if you want to use a heat gun it literally took me like a minute to dry this so now that it's dry i'm going to take that mosh posh and i want to go in nice even strokes here and i'm going to try to stay on the picture so i can still stay in the outside so i'm just going to do nice even strokes because how it's going to be on there is how it's going to dry so and it's going to be clear and they have um Mosh Podge that looks antique and things like that, but I think it's already antique enough. Um, but you can you are you can use that. So I'm just going over it with that dishwasher safe Mosh Podge, and just going to do nice even strokes. Just trying to keep it all. Just trying to get it all on here first, and then I'll kind of go over. And if you notice, whenever it starts to dry, you're going to see like these little white pieces like that. But when you get this Mod Podge on here, that's going to go away once the Mod Podge is completely dry. Come back in with either that wash rag or just even a baby wipe will be fine. And what I'm going to do is come back around any of these edges here and just try to wipe off that Mod Podge because I want to make sure that whenever I come in here that I'm going to be able to stain 
this, which you can always come back with a piece of a sandpaper. If you did get any Mod Podge on this, you can come back with a piece of sandpaper on the sides and take any of that off. Now you can also coat this with like, um, I believe polyurethane um, or um, an epoxy, just whatever you wanted to do. And you may not have a whole edge like mine. You may just want to do the whole picture on the whole thing. Um, but I wanted to do an edge. I still don't know if I want to. I've been thinking about maybe taking my uh, wood burner and putting their names in here. Or just putting Reesinger. Or even taking some vinyl and putting it on here as well. I'm not too sure what I want to do yet. Still thinking about that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let this dry. It takes not even, I mean, just say 30 minutes, not probably not even 30 minutes. Once this is dry, we'll come back and uh, we'll stain the outside edges and you'll get to see what it's gonna, the final product's gonna look like. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now it's all completely dry and this is what it looks like. You just need one coat. Now you can see here where um, the knot is on here. You can see a little bit of white down here. I'm just gonna either take my wood burning tool or Dremel and just kind of get that out of there or even take a toothpick and just kind of pick at that. So that's what it looks like so far. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around here. I'm gonna take this Old English because I'm just taking whatever's on hand. That's what I recommend for you too, to use whatever you wanna do. I had thought about doing a wash but she had specifically asked me for like wood, so I don't know if she would like a specific color, so I'm not gonna mess with the wash. So I'm just gonna do what I have on hand it's, is this old English. So, what I'm gonna do is just take this and put it on a paper towel and just wipe it down, just to kind of give it a little bit um, more color. So just get some on a paper towel like this, and then just start, and I'm gonna try to stay off of the picture. So I just kind of got it like this. You could take an old rag, paper towel, whatever you wanna use. And I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing like this. I think that looks awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to do, like I said, go around all my sides, let it dry, and then I'll flip it around and do the back. So now that this is dry, I've wiped back over it with a paper towel. Now what I'm going to do is I have decided to go over it with vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and add some vinyl here. I'm going to do the Mr. and Miss up here and do their uh, last name right here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for this. And I just used my handy dandy ruler, measured out what I wanted. I don't know if I'll keep this together or break it up into pieces to put down. We'll figure that out in just a second. Okay, so what I wanna start with is the, um, the date here. So I've got a piece that I think is almost big enough from uh, the project yesterday. And then I still have that big piece. So we're gonna go ahead and get these picked up. So I'm gonna scoot this out of the way so I can get this on here. I wanted to go with white, but I didn't have enough, so I think this will be fine, though. So I'm going to kind of do this at a diagonal. That way it'll fit the whole thing. And then I'm just going to go ahead and varnish this to get it on here. Make sure it's picking up all my dots. And I'm, once again, using the Dollar Tree uh, contact paper. All right, and this is um, the watermelon font from, it's the watermelon script font from dufonts.com. And I'll have that link down below if you haven't already downloaded that for your um, Cricut Maker. Love this font. So we got that picked up. And I wanna put this right down here in the bottom corner. So I'm just gonna kinda make sure I line that up really good. That looks good to me. So now I'm just gonna varnish that on here. I think this would have looked way better with the white, but like I said, I didn't have any on hand, so. And this is that Oracle 651. And the two places I get that name, I get this question a lot of where I purchase my HTV and my regular vinyl, and I actually purchase it from, most of the time, from parsby.com. And then if I don't purchase it from Parsby, I purchase it from um, Expressions. And I do have quite a bit of Cricut vinyl as well that I get from like the mystery boxes and stuff. I think their vinyl is priced good too when they have their cells. So I do have that as well. Okay, so I got the 318. I don't even think I was in frame for the 318. So there's the 318. So now I'm gonna add the re-singer. So first, before I get it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and get it picked up with my, I'm gonna do the same thing, just kind of angle my paper here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna angle it just like I did with the other one to make sure it's gonna reach from uh, corner to corner. So just in case you ever don't think your piece is gonna fit, try angling it. So, you know, like this is the same piece I used the other day. So I'm just gonna get this picked up. All right, so that should be good. All right, now I'm gonna bring back in my wood. Okay, and now I'm gonna figure out exactly where I want this. So, let's see. I'm kind of thinking more down here. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting it um, nice and even and straight. So I'm gonna kinda of get it down like this and then pick it up and look at it. So I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just varnish this down. And once again, you don't need to do anything special to get this down. You could always have gotten this down before you did the Mod Podge if you wanted to, and then went over the whole thing. But I just wanted to show you guys adding that little extra of vinyl, or if you would have done wood burning that I talked about, how much more it just really brings out this whole project. So I'm just gonna kind of bring this down, just like that. So I think that looks really cute. All right, so now we're gonna figure out the Mr. and Miss. So I need to figure out whether, because when I type it out, let me cut this little piece off. When I type it out on the design space, this is kind of how it comes. So I don't know if I should leave it like that or try to move it. I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. So let me move this back out of the way and pick this up. I may be able to get it straight this time. I don't have to angle my transfer tape. All right, I'm gonna get this picked up. All right. Bring this back in. And now I'm just gonna try to make sure that I keep this lined up and get it as straight as possible. So I'm thinking, so I kinda wanna come up like this, I'm not too sure. So let me set this down and see what I think about it. I think I'm gonna bring it over to the right just a little bit and bring it down. Kind of like this. Now let me test that. Let's see what I think. All right, I like it, but I want to bring it back up a little bit. Right about there. All right, I think that looks good. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna take and just get this varnished on here. like that so by adding vinyl to this project and you could always stencil this and do acrylic paints or you know like I said wood burning or whatever but just by adding that little bit of vinyl you can see how much more it just kind of brings out the project um, I really love that I think it looks super cute I hope she loves this um, if you found this helpful please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one